where purpose manifests. Welcome, welcome, welcome. The Most High has called you to be fellowshipping with me. The channel that has poetry, digital art, and kingdom topics. Plus rap. In the name of Yeshua, I pray you are increased with positive vibes. to do a recap all right so in the last kingdom topic part one we went over jubilee all right so again jubilee is where actually you would plant for seven years during agriculture in the ancient Israelite kingdom this is where plant for seven years then let the land rest for seven years seven years and you would let the land rest for seven years and you would plant for seven years all right so that's seven times seven that's 49 once you get to that second cycle of four which is the eighth cycle the 50th year you would let the land rest for seven years and it would be considered the jubilee year where all debts would be set free all right so um just thinking about jubilee i think that that was uh a great ancient um way to for environment to keep up environmental factors for the land because of course when you're letting the earth rest i think you get a better outcome with um the earth environmentally so and the jubilee just doing agriculture following the cycles of jubilee um i believe that if this modern day generation practiced that and kept that it you really could have kept it in this generation because we have so much technology uh, as far as um, hydroponic farming all right so that's a way that you could have let the land rest if we were keeping that in this modern generation because you would be using water and seed and you would be letting the land rest for environmental purposes because the heavenly father created this earth so he knows how he built it and that was an uh, ancient method of letting the land rest for environmental reasons okay because if you put too much pressure on the earth all right different things can happen with um different if you don't let the land rest so yes and uh, so that was what we went over in the part one jubilee then we went over land redemption all right so land redemption was dealing with the ancient israelite kingdom how commonwealth land um, was leased out not so but i mean you would sell it for a price to lease it all right so it was never really sold and if you wanted to get the land back prior to the jubilee year 
you would pay the person for how many ever years that they kept the land the surplus get the land to get the land back if you did not want to get the land back prior to jubilee you would let the person go through the full leasing term of 50 years and in the jubilee year the debt would be set free and they would have to give the land back okay because at that time frame everyone um, would have been operating their commonwealth land concept and i went over that um in life after the flood that kingdom topic that i talked about they were actually operating in commonwealth land lots allotted to the sons of shem ham and japheth the earth was divided amongst those three sons and them and their descendants um, had lots of land that was granted to them commonwealth land all right so we went over land redemption in the last segment. So I'm doing a recap. All right. And also we went over new heaven, new earth, prophetic prophecy on the new heaven and new earth. We went over a few scriptures concerning uh, the Heavenly Father's kingdom, eternal system that's coming to this earth. Hallelujah. So now we're going to get into part two of is Commonwealth land mentioned in, to, and mentioned in the Bible. And we're going to go over some more prophetic word. Hallelujah. All right. We are fire walking tonight, this evening. So on this current slide, we are going to get into the governing Melchizedek order. This is a part of the eternal Commonwealth land mentioned in the Bible. All right. So every kingdom has a governing rule, and we know that from the last segment in part one, we talked about the kingdoms of the world becoming the Heavenly Father, kingdoms, and His Son. And it is going to be under a governing holy rule of the governing Melchizedek order, which is a kingdom of priests, and it consists of bless, peace, and righteousness for eternity. So we're going to get into prophetic word concerning this Melchizedek order. So coming out of Tehillim or Psalms 110 and 4, verse 4 states, The Elohim have sworn and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. All right, so this is a prophetic word that the Heavenly Father decreed and pronounced over the Messiah, the eternal high priest. He says he has sworn and will not repent from what he had decreed. This is the Heavenly Father, the creator of all, stating this, uh, that thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. So this is a prophetic word in the Old Testament concerning the Messiah, Yahushua HaMashiach, uh, the eternal high priest, where the Heavenly Father decreed this Melchizedek order uh, over the high priest, a priest forever. So this is the eternal order. All right. So that's a firm foundation on the Melchizedek order, which is an ancient order um, prior to the Aaronic order. Okay, you had the Melchizedek order that was in effect. Hallelujah. And in the Old Testament, it talks about Abraham um, giving a tenth of tithe to 
Melchizedek, the king of Salem, but, and this was prior to the Aaronic order because you have Abraham, Isaac, and Yaakov. The Aaronic order comes from Levi, which was the son of Yaakov. So he wasn't born yet when the Melchizedek order was in place. Okay, so the Aaronic order came after the Melchizedek order, but it's going to revert back to, in the eternal kingdom, the Melchizedek priestly order. Hallelujah. So we're going to go to the next prophetic word, Hebrews 7, 15 through 16, and 27, and I mean, Hebrews chapter 7. 15 through 16 and 26 and 17. I'm in shock, God. <laughs> I can't believe that I'm so talk close right now. All right. We're going to, in the next segment, we're going to take a coffee break. <laughs> okay. <laughs> a poetry coffee break. <laughs> so, anyhow, okay. Hebrew, the prophetic word is coming out of Hebrews 7, 15 through 16, and verses 26 and 27. Verse 15 states, And it is yet far more evident, for that after the similitude of Melchizedek, there arises another priest. So the Messiah, right here in this prophetic word, is the other priest uh, the other priest that is talking about another priest that's going to come in the similitude of Melchizedek, meaning he's coming in the similarity of the Melchizedek priestly order. Verse 16, who is made not after the law of carnal commandment, but after the power of endless life. Okay, so he's made after not carnal commandment. That means commandments of men. He is made after a uh, power of endless life. So this is a heavenly priestly order uh, ordained and decreed by the Father. All right. So there is no carnality in the Melchizedek order. There's no man-made traditions. It's specifically dealing with the Heavenly Father's holy, ordained, and decreed commandments, laws, will, purpose of eternal rest and peace in the eternal kingdom commonwealth system. Hallelujah. Verse 26. For such an high priest became us who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners and made higher than the heavens. For such an high priest became us who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners and made higher than the heavens. All right, so this is the uh, description of the Messiah who became the high priest, okay? who is harmless, holy, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens. Hallelujah. All right. Um, because he is on a holies of holies priestly order. All right. So, um, decreed by the heavenly father, the ancient of days, the creator. Hallelujah. Verse 27, who needed not daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifices. So unlike the Aaronic order, the Levitical order, his priestly order, um, it, it doesn't deal with um, offering up daily sacrifices like the Levitical Aaronic order. 
first for his own sins and then for the people's. Okay, because the priestly Aaronic Levitical order had to offer up um, sacrifices, animal sacrifices for their own sins and for the people's sins. All right, but the high priest, his order is different. Okay, for this he did once when he offered up himself. So he became the ultimate um, sacrifice um, as the sacrificial lamb. He became the ultimate sin sacrifice, bridging the gap between Elohim and man, creating friendly relations by him completing the task that he completed when he was here upon the earth to be sinless, harmless, undefiled, and holy, and showing to them, Father, that man can actually be obedient, okay, to his ways, will, and commandments, all right? That's why the Messiah said, uh, let your will be done, not my will, Father, all right, so he went through completely with what his task was and earned the right to be the high priest, okay, after the order of Melchizedek, all right, and this order replaces the Aaronic Levitical old way of doing things but in the kingdom to come which i will uh, go further into uh, memorial services that's uh, what's going to be going in the eternal kingdom you will have memorial services where there will be feasts celebrated like the feast of tabernacles and things of that nature and um Passover as memorial services, um, but it will be handled in a different way. And the Levitical priesthood is going to be a part of the governing Melchizedek order. Uh, as kingdom, of, it's going to be a kingdom of priests, though. All twelve tribes. Um, it's going to be a kingdom of priests. All right, and it's going to be. Uh, a governing Melchizedek order of the kingdom of priests. Hallelujah. And everyone, all believers, uh, you're going to have your roles to play uh, living in this righteous, peaceful, eternal kingdom. Hallelujah. So now we're going to move to the next segment and we're going to continue to fire walk on this great subject is eternal commonwealth land mentioned in the bible hallelujah to the king of kings and our high priest after the order of melchizedek hallelujah all right we're gonna take a poetry break in front of the gates so you can grab you some tea grab you some coffee uh, some more tea or some coffee refreshes up. And listen to the this basic instructions the Bible. Leave an earth. And before the kingdom's the about to segment. emerge, the basic instructions before leaving earth. Hallelujah. The basic instructions before leaving earth is on your turf. Basic instructions before leaving earth is spiritual work. Basic instructions before living earth helps us understand life after you die. It is either heaven or hell where you will eternally be happy or burn forever and cry. Do we want to burn forever eternally? The answer to that is no. So in Yahshua, let us believe. We need to read. Our basic instructions before leaving earth, which stands for the Bible. And let Yahweh renew our minds for spiritual revival. The basic instructions 
before leaving Earth. Prepare for the kingdom about to emerge. The basic instructions before leaving Earth. The Bible is an awesome creator. He's the Alpha and the Omega forever. I will follow you. Hallelujah. We are back now. I got my refreshed cup of coffee. Armoretto. Ooh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are fire walking some more. I hope you enjoyed that poem. That's going to be on my next album, my poetry album. And, uh, I, as you know, put out the meditation album, or if you did not know, that album is out. Been getting great reviews, five stars. So, yeah, I just sent out, actually, I did a giveaway. And I sent out a few uh, complimentary CDs, you know, uh, to some believers that I know in the NYC. <laughs> yes, New York City. So, um, and I know that they're going to enjoy their uh, gift that I sent to them in meditation music. Hallelujah. So, and I probably, I'm going to do some more giveaways. I'm just getting in the mode of things, you know, as far as um, starting uh, this platform on YouTube and uh, expanding my company even more. So, yes. Hallelujah. So let's fire walk a little bit more here on this topic of eternal commonwealth land and the eternal kingdom. Hallelujah. So now we're going into prophetic eternal land setup and new heaven and new earth prophecy in the Old Testament and the New Testament. Hallelujah. On this wonderful kingdom topic. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. All right. So Yeshayahu, coming out of Yeshayahu, Isaiah 65, 17. Here's the prophetic word from the throne room, from the heavenly father, the ancient of days. Verse 17 states, for behold, I create new heavens and a new earth and the former shall not be remembered nor come into mind. So this is a prophetic word that the heavenly father pronounced in regards to the new heavens uh, that's the universe above the earth and the new earth. It was decreed in the Old Testament by the Heavenly Father. He stated, for behold, I create a new heaven and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered nor come into mind. So this is the prophetic overview of what he was going to do to the earth and the heavens after the flood okay because we know the book of isaiah it um, goes into prophetic word concerning the future all right uh, some of the book of isaiah or yes yeah then you have second kepha or Peter, Second Kepha, or Peter, three thirteen coincides with the Book of Isaiah sixty five seventeen. Now, verse thirteen in Kepha or Peter, chapter three, verse thirteen. Thirteen states, nevertheless, we, according to His promise, what promise? The promise that was mentioned in Yeshayahu. 6517. That's the promise it's talking about. Look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Hallelujah. So you see 
that uh, we believers look forward to that promise. All right, and this is Kepha is in the New Testament. Okay, modern day they call it the New Testament. I say all Holy Spirit, but it is considered the New Testament in this modern day. The promise, according to his promise, this is the Heavenly Father's promise from back in when Isaiah time was. That he's going to create a new heaven and a new earth. And the former things should not be remembered nor come into mind. Because it's going to be an eternal kingdom wherein dwelleth righteousness. Hallelujah. And then we have Gilgana, Revelations 21.1. Um, also coincides with the new heaven, new earth, prophetic word and promise. Uh, verse 21 of Gilgana or Revelation states, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea. Hallelujah. So we see here a prophetic word of a vision uh, that was seen. Uh, and it says uh, that what they saw, who was, who saw this? Yakuhanan, John the Revelator. <laughs> so John sees it. Okay. Uh, he saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven. And the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea. So that is consisting of the remodeling of the earth okay so you, is, is there the sea he didn't see the sea in the in the in the new heaven and new earth because it's a remodeling the heavenly father is doing to the heavens and the earth to make it new all right so some examples right now in our current time, which is, I love the word of the Heavenly Father, but uh, just to see these things happening in my current time, it just is so phenomenal to me. So on the top right, you see the Aral Sea, which is in Kazakhstan. From 1984, the top first picture was a picture of 1984 of the sea in Kazakhstan. 2020, you see the sea has pretty much dwindled and dried up. So where that water was, now you see mostly land, right? So this is the part of the remodeling of the earth. Um, it's a controversial topic, but in my opinion, I like to coincide current events with prophetic word in the Bible. So uh, from that point of view, of uh, that prophetic word of there will be no more sea, you see right now in our current time, the Aral Sea, 1984, was full. 2020, it is practically dried up. The picture below the first top right, the second picture is 2020, you see the land. And the third picture below, you see a closer picture of boats where the sea was. Now you see nothing but dry land and you see the boats that were left, they're left on the dry land because it has dried up that much. Um, no more sea. All right, and then the fourth picture below is uh, the Dead Sea in the modern day Israel. Okay, so we know in the last segment we talked about the purchasing of land in this modern day era. Okay, and uh, the modern day Israel was purchased in 1948 through the Belfort Declaration. Okay, so the fourth picture 
is a picture of the Dead Sea in the modern day Israel. And you can see the water in 2016 was at the top of that uh, peak, all right, of land. To the second picture, you can see the after effect of the water. In 2017, you see the water has dwindled down. So now you see more of the rock, whereby uh, on the 2016 picture, you see that the water was far above the rock. But you see that water is has dwindled down. Okay, so you see more of the rock when at first the water was covering it. And then and the last picture below that is a picture of the Dead Sea, whereby you see more of the sea, the dry ground um, where water used to be. Now it's land there from the sea drying up. So that's more examples of prophetic word regarding uh, there will be no more sea, so this the Heavenly Father um, drying up the sea. Okay, so it's uh, I look at it as this prophetic word as a gradual process, but we know um, that the Heavenly Father has his timeline and he has his time frame when he's going to um, completely complete every word that he mentioned in his holy word prophetically shall come to pass. Hallelujah. So we're going to move to the next segment of my summary. And hallelujah and glory to the Heavenly Father Yahweh. And give thanks for his son, Yahushua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So now we're to my summary of is eternal commonwealth land mentioned in the Bible part two. So we see that from a firm foundation of precept upon precept with the Heavenly Father opened my eyes to see that uh, he definitely has an eternal kingdom commonwealth system that is coming uh, after the order of Melchizedek kingdom of priests all right so we have a firm foundation on uh, the spiritual realm merging to the physical earthly realm so you have a spiritual aspect merging into the physical realm of things and uh, this is just an overview of the Heavenly Father's ways, will, and plan for the new heaven and a new earth. So hopefully, to all of my viewers that view it in, this can gives you more of a firm foundation on your journey with more understanding about what the Heavenly Father has decreed and uh, give you more inspiration and hope for the future. Hallelujah. Thank you again for tuning in and may you have a wonderful week. And usually I do a te I used to do a testimony once a month. <laughs> but this is my expansion. I've been doing more so of the testimony kingdom topic of what the Heavenly Father has opened my eyes to see. So I hope you enjoy this. And until next time, have a wonderful, wonderful week and evening. Hallelujah.